The late American painter and art philosopher Robert Henri once wrote, There are moments in our lives, moments in a day, when we seem to see beyond the usual. Such are the moments of our greatest happiness, our greatest wisdom. German-born photographer Ruth Bernhardt has dedicated much of her life to capturing such moments with her camera. Inspired by noted photographer Edward Weston, Bernhardt was drawn to California in the mid-30s, where she began a celebrated career that has spanned over 60 years. She is renowned for her mastery of light and composition, and for her ability to transform the ordinary into the extraordinary. Bernhardt's work is included in major international collections and gallery exhibitions. At the age of 85, she remains a vital contributor to the establishment of photography as an artistic form of expression. I spoke with Ruth Bernhardt in San Francisco, where she has made her home since 1952. It fascinates me that you have to work with a very scientific material to create such an artistic product. I mean, the dark room and the chemicals and the... Yes, you have to overcome it. The camera somehow becomes extremely personal. And I don't know how it's done. I mean, I can really not explain it. But the process of making a photograph is influenced by how you're feeling. And how the camera does that, I somehow must, must admit that it's a puzzle to me. But I can make the camera do what I want it to do. And you have to always be master of the camera and never slave. And so there are cameras that are so complicated and so sharp and they do all kinds of marvelous things that I could not work with. I want to work with something that's extremely simple that I can be in command of. And I also like to see the things the way my eyes see them and not the way the lens sees it. Now the Nikon, for instance, a very sharp camera. And if I were to photograph you with the Nikon, it would show every little thing that my eyes would never notice and that I'm not interested in. So I photograph things very tenderly as if I had tears in my eyes with a little bit of softness, you see. And the camera is not made to look like the human eye. It's made much more so. I'm not interested in that. What about the process of developing the film? How much can you control? You can control a lot. There's a great deal that you can do to make a film do what you want it to do. Now, Ansel Adams uh, was one of the masters at doing that. It's developing Exposure and development is a very important part of the creative process. So you know what it's going to look like before you ever make your first exposure. If you can do that, then you have, you're in charge of the entire process. And my photographs are always the way my eye wants to see it. Now, I don't know if there's some trick that I am using that I don't know about, but somehow it works. It has been working for me. If it doesn't, I have a very large wastebasket <laughs> and it drops. <laughs> I would not be happy if I couldn't control the process. Perhaps this is one of the reasons why people are surprised at my work, because it always looks, they feel the tenderness in the way I feel. I don't know how I do it. I cannot teach anybody how to do that. I can only teach a person to be true to themselves and to only photograph the way you feel. And if they do that, then they are doing the right thing. So it's really, it has to do with feeling deeply about it and not to think of, never think of who's going to be looking at it. Never do it for somebody, do it for yourself. 
When I make photographs, I first of all express my love. And then some of the people who are looking can feel that. And perhaps when I photograph the innocence of leaves and shells and bodies, that maybe they become a little bit more aware of the fact that this is in their life also. And if I have succeeded in that, maybe I have made a millimeter of success for another person.